All right, so in OBS, of course, you already went to output recording settings, set it to advanced here. And then you played around with these settings because you wanted to get better uh, scrubbing performance in Premiere, I assume. Maybe you watched some videos. Well, the best video I saw was from two years ago, so I made a new one because the settings changed in OBS. This is the last preset I tested, or last configuration I tested, ignore that for now. And we're gonna just take the files that I recorded and drag them in. This one I'm just gonna delete, that was a failed attempt. And we're just gonna wait for Premiere to generate peak files. And here we have some uh, performance tracking. Meanwhile, hopefully that'll be useful. All right, we're gonna start uh, here with CQP 18 and Max B frames 4, because Max B frames is supposed to be so important. All right, scrubbing, scrubbing, scrubbing. We recorded at uh, 60 FPS, of course, and it's a, a 1080p recording in resolution terms. Seems fine. Doesn't seem perfect, of course. All right, let's set it to max B frames 2. Let's select create a new sequence and start scrubbing. Is this like worse? Okay, so let's do a clicking test. Weird. This, the, this one feels much better. This one feels much worse. All right, let's continue to max B frames one. What? What? <sighs> wow, apparently all the heavy uh, lifting is being done by the iGPU. You know what? I'm going to have to go go to BIOS and disable that thing. That's what I'm going to have to do. Or maybe I can just do it in uh, Device Manager. Let's see. So next, let's check out this one. New sequence from that. This is a different encoding uh, method. This is variable bitrate. I usually use this. This is what I've used mostly uh, lately. And I have no idea if it's a good idea. Seems okay to me. Excuse me, are, are we stuck? Apparently we are stuck. Wow, that, that was bad. That was, uh, like, not good. Now, it might be unfair that I am... Like, the, the further we go, it might be actually getting harder for the iGPU to keep track of memory or handle memory, because the iGPU is limited to one gigabyte of memory, if, if I'm not mistaken, which might be a big problem. Okay, so let's go here and a new sequence from clip. Uh, this is uh, with constant bitrate of 15 million bits per second. Before we had 10 to 15 million bits per second. Uh, let me just show you real quick what I mean, just so we don't get this wrong. Um, output recording. So this is a constant bitrate template which I tested last. Um, it's already kbps, so yeah, and then we have 1 million and times 15 would be 15 million bps. I have no idea why the GPU is spiking right now. I guess we're gonna just let it pass. Well, let's um, try out some more scrubbing. It's all pretty bad. What I was expecting is that, first of all, the MBF max B frames would help in every case. Uh, of course, I only tested the different uh, MBF values in the CQP encoding situation with 4, 2, and 1 max uh, B frames. But I assumed that if the one with the uh, number 1 would be best, and then we would just continue with variable bitrate and constant bitrate uh, and compare those last three. But we can clearly see that the iGPU is bottlenecking, um, yeah, I'm gonna call it bottlenecking like crazy. I guess I'm gonna get the device manager and see if we can do it live. Uh, I'm gonna just save a project, okay, saving that. Let me get the device manager. Not display adapters, right? Oh, okay, it is here. All right, let's disable the device and see what happens. Premiere, you're gonna crash? You, oh, okay, OBS went black for a second there. Actually, you know what, I should have saved the MSI. Okay, let me interrupt. 
stopped and continued recording because <laughs> that was really stupid of me. I could have lost the recording. Um, right, so MSI is uh, still tracking. Uh, what, what is it tracking here? Oh, never mind. The white stuff is RT, still RTX stuff. Um, yeah, we lost the iGPU utilization completely here. Wait, no, it's not flatlining. It's still going on. All right, get, let's get the task manager because that one would show. Well, the iGPU is gone from here. Usually that would be another field here for the iGPU. Okay, let's test the uh, scrubbing now. And see what's... Okay, so now the CPU is doing all the lifting. And I'm guessing... What? <laughs> um... Well, I can hear my... <laughs> we can see the, uh, the heat going up and I can hear the fan ramping up. Okay, it is better, isn't it? Clearly better. This is pretty incredible. Uh, wow. Uh, I thought using the... Wow, look at... Wow, this is so... This is so smooth! All of a sudden, this is so smooth. This is smooth. Uh, and max B frames 2 is smooth. And max B frames 1 is smooth. I can't even tell whether it's the smoothest. Thing is, I re just recently upgraded my system, so I prob probably should have tried to use uh, 4K footage, but I don't know if upsampled. I guess it would have made sense, yeah, to tell uh, OBS to upsample to 4K. Oh boy, my poor CPU, my poor CPU. I mean, that's what it's built for, but I would prefer not to do it. I have the impression that constant bitrate is a bit better than variable bitrate. Zooming, 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 zooming. Zooming, 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 zooming. Zooming, 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 zooming. Zooming, 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 zooming. No, not really. It's pretty much the same. Um, as for 2 and 4, I can't tell the difference by now. Yeah, I seriously cannot tell the difference. So let's take a look at the files. And I need to figure out if Premiere has a setting to uh, make sure that it... Wait a second. Hey, CPU, calm down. Okay, cool. Uh, I need to figure out if there's a way to tell um, Premiere not to use QuickSync from the iGPU for scrubbing, because apparently this is really a problem. Okay, I told you where we're going to look at the files. So here they are. Let's uh, switch to... Det Oops, wrong direction. Detail view. Here. Here. Okay, here. So let's see, we have, uh, interesting, I recorded most at 1.20, 1 minute 20 seconds, only this one I kind of messed up. Anyways, file size differences quite noticeable, wow! That's why I switched to variable bit uh, bitrate. Yeah, because the file size was just bugging me. The CQP file size is just nearly four times, definitely three times as as uh, large as uh, variable bitrate. Constant and variable bitrate over here. Of course, this is quite a dark scene. Uh, I mean, uh, receiver 2. I'm using receiver 2 as a benchmark, I guess. Because um, I've been playing that f for forever and I'm enjoying it a lot. So, nice, nice, nice. I didn't I didn't do a quality image quality comparison. To be honest, I'm assuming the differences are not that noticeable. I might do that uh, another time. But what is really important here is the file size to me because eventually I'm tired of getting new hard drives. I'm so tired. It's of course all due to my organizational skills and uh, decision decisional skills on what to delete and what to keep. But Variable bitrate, much smaller file size. Constant bitrate, about 40-30% higher, uh, higher file size. CQP 18, of course I could try with higher values, like 20 or 22 maybe. Three times to four times as high the file size. Now what I'm really confused about is why does uh, a higher B frame count 
Ah, I see. So higher B frame count increases file size. I thought it worked the other way. I thought max B frames means maximum distance between keyframes, which doesn't make sense. B frames is something that is not like keyframes. It's different, right? I, I'm not. I don't. I don't know what B frames are. I'm gonna go and watch a video on that. I'm gonna probably just read the Wikipedia page. Oh, let me just do that for you. Let me just do that. Okay, so I didn't realize that freaking Nvidia has a page on this. That's pretty amazing. Blah blah blah. B frames are great because they increase image quality, but they consume a lot of your available bitrate. So they reduce quality on high motion content. Huh. Set to 4. If you uncheck the look ahead option, reduce this to 2 B frames. Uh, okay, well I'm guessing we're just gonna set it to 2 then. Because apparently it doesn't have an impact on scrubbing. At least not for CQP encoding, as far as I can tell. Boy oh boy, my poor CPU. I had no idea. Maybe I should have gotten a 10900K instead of a 10700K. Wow. Alright, so let's just turn on this again. Enable device. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and here it is. The GPU 2 is back. It's back, baby. I don't think that <laughs> MSI Afterburner will realize. But we can clearly tell that scrubbing is... Wait, can we clearly tell that scrubbing is bad now? No, we are still using CPU. As you can see, the CPU is growing uh, as we scrub. So um, I guess it's time to restart Premiere for a change. Okay, I also have to restart MSI Afterburner. Please don't delete the profile. Okay, as we can see, scrubbing is uh, not as great. And as you can see, the CPU is not being utilized anymore. But the iGPU is utilized en masse. Extremely, really. Boy, oh boy. Uh, this is really... Uh, this is really not something I expected. Okay, so for this we need to go to uh, Project uh, Settings. Where is that? Project, project Manager? No, Project Settings. In the File menu. Uh, general Scratch Disk Image Settings. We want General, I believe. Okay, here we are. So, Video Rendering and Playback. Video Rendering and Playback. This is a bit confusing. Uh, I don't know why OpenCL is here. Wh what will OpenCL do if I enable that? Nothing, right? Did you just stop stop work? Okay. So now it's still using the iGPU, as we can see here by the white graph. The white line the, uh, stands for the HD 630 that I have on my on my uh, 10700K chip uh, CPU chip. Right, so that didn't do anything. Let's go back to File, pro uh, Project Settings, General, and turn it to Mer Mercury Playback Engine Software Only. So, Software Only Time. Software Only Time. What are you doing? Premiere, what are you doing? You are clearly still using the iGPU. Here's a Task Manager. We can see the iGPU is spiking just spiked as as we are seeing in MSI Afterburner. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Holy cannoli. Do I really have to device manager uh, side disable the iGPU for this? Oh, that doesn't use the QuickSync? That doesn't use QuickSync? Why don't you use QuickSync, buddy? Well, whatever it is, the cool thing is you can just do it in the device manager. You don't have to go to BIOS each time you want to get rid of uh, the iGPU. I guess that's good. Okay, so the thing is, when I installed my new computer, uh, the iGPU was actually disabled by default. I had to painfully enable it because I thought, I thought it actually gives a performance increase in Premiere. That's what I thought. I think it might have actually given me an increase on my previous system with the i5-6600 CPU because the CPU was so weak. Maybe. Maybe that's what happened. Or maybe I was, I just tricked myself back then as well. I don't see a way to disable the iGPU usage from Premiere. The only way I see uh, that, uh, that it's possible is from over here in the device manager. And of course you can do that in, um, in BIOS. You can just turn off the iGPU there. But who wants to restart their computer all the time? Yeah, that's right. 
you want to. No, you don't. So uh, we learned a lot. I mean, I learned a lot. I don't know about you. I learned a lot. So again, there is no freaking difference between variable bitrate, constant bitrate and CQP at some level. I, I guess it just lagged a little longer, but that's fine. Let's see. I will have to make a, another video where I actually compare these. I guess CQP is a bit laggier. Yeah, it's a bit laggier. That's what I, the impression I'm getting here. Logically, constant bitrate should be the fastest. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use variable bitrate 10 to 15 million uh, bits per second. That's what I'm going to do. Yep. Because file size matters. File size matters as well. So I hope this confusion that I went through was useful to you. This uh, pretty much invalidated a bunch of videos, didn't it? A bunch of other videos on your computer. You really should try this out as well. Basically, you just need notepad. Let me show you what I did here. Uh, here. So I just wrote down the, the settings that I used. And then I wrote, called the file after recording, I immediately called the file test one. And then I did the same because that one was too short. And then I did it with test three, test four, test five, test six. And then later I wrote down the, the defining features of those tests into the file names. So it would be easier to explain and track. And of course, my trusty MSI Afterburner, the best way to track uh, your GPU utilization. I wish there was a better looking one, but there is no better way as far as I can tell. Maybe maybe I'm going to go for NVIDIA experience eventually, but I really would rather not. It seems so bloaty to me. If you need uh, help with setting up MSI Afterburner so you can keep track of the video encoding utilization of your iGPU at the same time, uh, compare it to the CPU uh, utilization, etc. If you need help with that, let me know in the comments. I will make a video if enough people require it. There's probably already some videos, maybe no good ones. I don't know, maybe only out of date ones. Uh, so let me know. And then when you set up this and you set up some tests, then you will be able to compare on your system, which is better for you. And again, remember this this freaking uh, life hack, turning off your iGPU. Why, Premiere? Why, Adobe? Why? Thank you for watching, and I hope you will be editing your videos faster now. I know I will. This is a game changer for me, just so you know. Until next time, ciao.